start of a discussion, hopefully, uh, about uh, components of a DRM pipeline that can be hot plugged. Uh, so I work at Moodle as a, a Linux kernel device driver developer, mostly. Um, I'm working on a, a project uh, for a, a product. It's a healthcare product, which is going to be launched next year. So it's in an advanced stage of hardware design. It's basically a classic ARM64 uh, product. It's using device three. It works normally with a specified set of features. But the peculiarity is it has this connector in red in the picture uh, where you can attach an add-on at runtime, at any moment, you can attach and detach this uh, add-on, which uh, that's a proprietary connector. Uh, it can add components on some buses that are non-natively uh, hot plug, not discoverable, um, including my PDSI. Um, so that's the complexity of the project. Uh, and uh, on the MyPDSI, there is, uh, uh, on the add-on side, uh, at least on some of the add-on models, there is a uh, DSI to LVDS bridge connected to an LVDS uh, panel. Um, so uh, this is an, an overview of the product. Uh, the overall solution uh, for the whole thing, the whole product, is to use device tree overlays. There is a discussion about this on Friday uh, in the embedded uh, um, Microconference. Uh, so specifically, th this is specifically for DRM right now. Um, there is the latest uh, patches around are the V4 series, which I've sent yesterday just to have uh, the state of the art uh, public before this discussion. Um, if you've seen V3, it's very similar, so not big changes between V3 and V4. Uh, the, the series is about the whole work, and one of the patches is specific for, for uh, DRM. So this is uh, the, the, the goal of the product and of the project. And the approach we, we propose in the series is the hot plug bridge. So uh, the main issue with DRM is that the whole pipeline is assumed to be immutable, except for the panel or the display, so what is after the connector. But it's not the case for this uh, uh, use case, because there is a bridge. And a bridge is not supposed to be ever removed from a DRM pipeline unless you remove the entire card. But here, we want the card to be always present. Uh, we have um, user space, Weston, or can be whatever, uh, which is using um, possibly multiple displays. It has to be notified when there is a panel attached, adapt the uh, graphics to the geometry, and so on. So uh, the idea was to uh, implement a, a bridge, a DRM bridge, which is decoupling the two sides of the pipeline, the fixed and the removable one. So this is how it looks when there is no add-on connected. So again, the red block is the connector. And we added this uh, bridge uh, in, in the middle, which is basically representing the connector. So imagine a bridge, which unlike other bridges, it doesn't have any register. It doesn't manipulate the video. It only has DSI input and DSI output, but DSI output could be present or not. Um, so that's somewhat a bridge in some sense. Um, so the uh, pipeline, when there is no add-on connected, looks like this. There is, uh, in this case, there is a bridge before the connector, which is inside the system on chip. And um, so when, when it is running, you can see in the, in the text below, there is one connector. It's a DSI connector. The status is always disconnected, because there is never a panel attached directly to this connector. Um, and when there is an add-on present, uh, there will be um, so the, the, the data part of the hardware, and uh, a new connector will be added, uh, will be populated uh, at runtime. Uh, that's an LVTS connector in this case. And, um, and then there is a panel and whatever. So you can see the connector uh, added uh, using mode test, for example. So there is one connector in one case and two connectors in the other case. And the LVDS connector is always uh, connected when it's present because the panel is always connected to the previous bridge. So that's what uh, works right now in, in the latest version of the patches. Um, the, um, so the hot black bridge is not, as I said, a, a, a classic bridge in the sense that it's a, a chip with input pins and output pins and registers and so on. So uh, representing that as a DRM bridge is maybe a sort of um, 
uh, not necessarily the obvious abstraction. Uh, however, it has a lot of advantages we found, uh, so it fully decouples the two sides of, of the pipeline. Uh, so there is the fixed side and the removable side, and none of the other two bridges, the one before and the one after, uh, knows anything about hot plug. They needed zero changes uh, to those drivers to work with hot plug, which we believe is a great advantage because that would allow any other bridge to be used in, in, in that place uh, without any modification. So the, the, the Samsung bridge will always see the following bridge, which is the hot plug bridge, uh, that would look normal. And the TI bridge will always see the hot plug bridge before. And when the add-on is removed, the TI bridge is just um, removed, just like any uh, normal device. Um, so th those drivers are not even aware about hot plug. Uh, also, the implementation is self-contained. Uh, almost all the implementation is in the hot plug driver itself. Uh, we have a couple pretty small modifications to the uh, DRM core. Uh, there may be more needed, uh, maybe for some additional uh, aspects I'm still working on, uh, but uh, it's still pretty self-contained and, and, and clean, so not touching too much of the core. That was one of, of the design goals. It's not necessarily the best one, but that was our idea. Um, and the DRM card is always present, uh, so the user space uh, can rely on that. Current status, uh, so I just sent patch uh, series uh, before yesterday, and um, so uh, the patch number four in the series is adding this driver, which is uh, basically the, the core of the work. It's a pretty small driver, a few hundred lines. Uh, the, there was a little feedback from Vaccine Repard on V1, and then most of the discussion now is uh, in an email thread with Sima after he, she reviewed my uh, V2 uh, patches uh, with a lot of change requests. Um, is Sima in the room, maybe? No? Okay, that said. Um, so, uh, work that I've been doing after that is uh, in V3, I changed how the connector works, so I basically I added this LVDS uh, connector, um, which I um, described. Um, it is added and removed dynamically uh, based on uh, connection and disconnection. Uh, it is inspired to display poor master stream transport, the PMST, as suggested by SEMA, and I think it was a very good improvement in how uh, the thing is uh, exposed to user space. It's more realistically matching user space. Um, I've also made a small step in V4 um, to remove the bridge notifiers. Um, so now there's a new operation in the DRM bridge function, so it's not terribly different uh, in the practice, but it's a small step forward. Uh, I'm working on other aspects, especially the um, format change on DSI uh, to, to notify to the DSI host about format change, uh, but um, Mostly I have uh, some very big open issues, uh, still open. Um, so I'm still needing a lot of clarification on the input I got from, from SEMA because it's, well, some of it is not uh, clearly understandable to me. Uh, so I, I would benefit some uh, additional uh, information on that. Um, and so uh, up to now, Advanced has been very difficult to try to understand uh, all the aspects. Uh, so one very fundamental question is uh, what should be moved from the hot plug bridge driver to the DRM core or the DRM bridge core? Um, definitely something should probably be moved. Um, so the core should be more aware of what's going on instead of pretending it's just normal stuff. Uh, but it's not exactly clear, and especially uh, there is one even, even more fundamental question, in, and that's whether a hot black bridge should really exist or not, in the sense of a struct DRM bridge object. Um, so definitely a connector must be created, but uh, a bridge is not totally obvious uh, that it's a good idea to have it, uh, even though if we don't have it, uh, it's not clear to me how we can keep the card existing when one bridge, so the, the, the last fixed bridge, uh, will not see anymore the following bridge. Uh, so currently the 
the code is not, no bridge is expect, expects to see the following bridge disappear at any moment. So that would break a lot of things and uh, I think it would need to rework a lot of things in the core and in existing drivers. So it looks like having the DRM, the hot plug bridge in the middle is still a good, um, a good implementation technique to have it uh, more transparently into the pipeline. Uh, the other aspect is lifetime ref counting. Uh, so uh, DRM bridges have no uh, lifetime management uh, because they are not supposed to disappear ever uh, un unless the car disappears. And um, so one proposal uh, by SEMA was to uh, make the connector we are adding already, which ben has already uh, ref counting lifetime management, uh, to have the connector own the removable bridges. Uh, so when a removable bridge appears, uh, get it uh, parented to the connector uh, so that it will benefit from the uh, lifetime management ref counting of the connector itself. That's possible. It has uh, implications, uh, complex implication in the implementation, but I think it's possible. However, there is a suspect that we would need a ref counting for the bridges anyway. Uh, so that's the other question. And one other aspect, uh, just to mention the, the big ones, is um, atomic updates. So what happens if we remove during an atomic update? That's some, a, a topic I still haven't opened, so I don't have much uh, material on my side. But So that's, that's the issues I have, the, the topics, and, and that's the design. So I'm open to comments, suggestions, whatever, questions. Oh, I didn't hear the right hand. <laughs> yeah, okay, so, <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, I, uh, well, the uh, uh, connectors go in all, uh, uh, being registered and unregistered, that was my comment during the talk, and that's good that they are now appearing, the connectors being removed or unregistered. So that's good that is now a thing. Uh, I'm not sure that there should be a, a hot plug bridge because we have detached operation. Yeah, most of the bridges do not care, and that's a bug. Uh, I mean, we, we have a lot of bugs and we have a lot of issues, uh, I would say, with rough counting. Uh, with the bridges, so we had those with the deregistration of the bridges and when the bridge disappears, when the previous bridge already has a link to it, because usually bridges just take a link to the next bridge and then they store it like forever. So this uh, this looks like a thing that needs to be fixed. We need a, an, an event or we need a call, maybe a callback telling that yeah, the next bridge has disappeared. Or maybe that should be solved using a dev link or in some other way. So that's the thing to do. Uh, remove, uh, so the, uh, for the hot plug bridge, I, th I said I think uh, there is no need for a special bridge, but if you, have, uh, if you think that, it's, uh, uh, that something needs to track the powering on and off, for example, the, some electronics in your, uh, your add-on, then it might be a thing. So don't create it just for the sake of it. If you should need it if you need to do some things with that, or if you need to link to parts of the bridge chain. Okay. Uh, yeah. that, that's, I think, most of my comments. So the, the aspect of um, bridges disappearing, uh, so as you said, there are bri many bridges take a pointer to the following one and keep it forever, and so that's, I'd say the number one reason we have the hot plug bridge in the middle, because the previous bridge will find, will get a pointer to the, the following one, which is the hot plug bridge, and that is not going to disappear. Uh, and then the following bridge is, I mean, the hot plug bridge has a pointer to the following one, the TI bridge in this example, uh, but it knows it may disappear, so it, it, it treats that carefully. So the idea was let's put all of these disappearing pointers management inside one small driver which does that. So that's one main thing it does. Um, and that's 
I'm not, not sure it answers your... I, I would say, uh, I, well, my humble opinion is that uh, I would prefer maybe for the next bridge pointer to go away at all. So make, uh, start, for, start, start from the bridges that you own, that uh, you have in your chain, and make them stop using the next bridge pointer by uh, having an easy to use API to yeah, get like the next pointer at the attach and the, at the detach time. And then all other bridges can follow. I think that is an easier, well, in a longer term, that's a better solution than having a separate hot plug bridge that just fits a place in just to, for the sake of, the, of having a pointer. I mean, yes, uh, l l let me explain. So in, uh, we had similar situation on our platform where we added so the Oaks, Oaks bridges uh, for the intermediate devices like uh, DisplayPort 5 or the DisplayPort uh, Retimer uh, up to the point where we get to the actual uh, USB-C connector. But they are actual devices on the actual bus, so they, they, are, they exist in the, probe, in the device tree. So I would say make that, uh, you can make that a discriminator. If you have a special device in your device tree, then it might have a bridge. So, yeah. Won't you need something in the device tree anyway, though? Because most of the bridges, like the, the DSI M bridge there, would probably try to like look for its next device and not find it, right? And so it's got to point to something that says, I'm expecting to get something later, so it doesn't just fail to probe and say, hey, there's no next device, right? Normally, when they're probing, they look for either the next bridge or the panel, and if they don't find that, I would consider most bridges would just say an error, not mm -hmm. I'm a hot plug defer. thing. They would say defer, which would be bad, because you don't want it to sit in a defer loop, right, until someone adds a thing. I don't know, maybe not, but it, like to me it feels like there's gotta be something in the device tree saying, you know, my next device isn't going to exist until someone adds a device tree overlay, and we don't know what that's gonna be. And so either you need a separate node that's going to get populated or you need a property that's added or something. But so, so maybe there will be a device tree node. Yeah, yeah. and if, if there will be, I think there will be a bridge for it, for it anyway. Because you need to link, uh, if there will be a device node for this hot plug part in the device tree, you will have to have some kind of bridge anyway to link those two parts. That's what we did with Oaks bridges. Yeah, so that... Uh, my, my uh, understanding is um, so we could remove the hot plug bridge, but that would mean the previous bridge would need modifications first to know that the following one could disappear and appear at any moment. So that's something like uh, information in device tree. Um, and then it needs to be modified to not um, hard fail or hard defer when there is no following bridge. And then it needs to be modified to know it could disappear, so remove the pointer, whatever. Uh, so this is, of course, doable. However, it looks like, have, like at the next design, you change uh, the hardware. You don't use the Samsung DSIM. You use blah, blah device. And so you have to modify also that driver again with all of those changes and so on. So that was exactly the idea of let's put one thing in the middle which is valid for every bridge and does all the thing, and it, to the previous bridge, everything looks like it's always present, no problem. Uh, that was the idea. So I, I understand it might be, to some extent, cleaner to remove that, um, but it would make a lot of changes needed to the, to the kernel, so I'm not sure. Do you think this is really the way to go? Um, I don't know. I'm okay if the answer is yes. Uh, I'm just trying to understand the, the, the advantages that might come from uh, modifying e potentially up to each every uh, bridge driver. From my point of view, the advantage is to have the uh, yeah. Uh, from my point of view, the advantage is to have a consistent API and consistent use cases for all the bridges, so that uh, there is no. Uh, so that there are no two kinds of bridges, which, which know that they, uh, the next thing can appear, disappear, appear, disappear, and other bridges that are settled on having 
Okay, so that it would become, let's say, the default that every bridge must expect that the following one will disappear. Yeah, or pretty much like we are slowly progressing towards DRAM bridge connector or any other, yeah, <laughs> any kind of uh, connector being created not by the bridge itself, but by the uh, root driver. Yeah, I see. So in, in the case of, like you mentioned, the API uh, looks like, no, no, <laughs> looks like somewhat similar to like the V4L2 macros to send a call to the following or previews, you don't know. Yeah, the, anyway, an API to tell the DRM core, please tell this thing to the following or previous bridge, whatever it is, which could fail. No? Would that work? Okay, let, yeah, let let's, let's go for Maxim. Yeah, no, I think it's quite important that we don't special case it. Um, if we expect bridge to be hot pluggable, then all of them should be. And because like, otherwise, basically every driver will eventually have to check whether the next bridge is a hot plug bridge that is, um, well, each bridge up front will never move possibly every bridge after we move, but depending on the hardware configuration, you will not have the same combinations. So some of the bridges will be before on some boards, some of the other bridges will be after the hot plug connector, so it's going to become a mess. And so I think, yeah, the way to handle it properly in the core would be to just declare all bridges hot pluggable. And so at any point in time, you can expect it to go away uh, and deal with that. And so I think in your questions slide, um, yeah, that one. Um, you shouldn't really tackle all these issues in this particular order. I would first go for the lifetime of counting ownership issues um, because there's a lot of bridges that take pointer to the next bridge. It's like fairly common in drivers. So we need to address that first if we want to be able to remove them. And then, yeah, probably dealing with the bridge removal during atomic updates then, and how do we deal with that? And here I think it would be quite nice. So we kind of have a mechanism to deal with the whole DRM display, um, DRM device uh, going away uh, because it's been hot plugged. Um, and so the way it works is that it sets a flag in the DRM device. And then it, every time you, you're supposed to access the device, you actually check if that flag is set. And only if it's not set, you actually do the device access, which is so DRM dev enter exit uh, for reference. And so having a similar mechanism for bridges would be nice, consistent at least. Um, and then I think the two questions remaining, uh, the first one would probably be like, do we need to have a hot plug bridge, which will kind of depend also on whatever the device tree maintainers say, but I'm, I'm, fine with, I'm fine with it either way, I guess. I, like it's not a big deal to me. Um, Either way, it's fine. We, we have some drivers that have device tree nodes that are not actual drivers. We have the other way around. We have, like, it's not a big deal anyway. And what should be moved to DRM core? I mean, yeah, it will depend on whatever we have done before. So it's hard to tell right now. Whatever can be shared, I guess. Um, but yeah. Yeah. So. Um, basically, the idea is to have, like, add a native support for hot plugin to bridges, and then one by one implement it into every driver that needs that. But sti we'll still keep the old thing around until they are all. I mean, cleaned. ideally, I think we can do something that doesn't need to modify each and every bridge driver. Uh, at the same time. Yeah, we, we, we have some um, functions, for example, that are used quite commonly to get the pointer to the next bridge. Maybe we can just make that function take a reference, for example, and then all the drivers are doing the ref counting properly or somewhat properly. 
But so I, I don't think we need to, like it's probably a bad idea actually to try to make it opt-in. Uh, it would be much better to do it in some, possibly with the help of Coccinelle, I don't know, but rolling it out all at once. Um, it should uh, be fairly easy. I think one issue with, um, with getting this done uh, with device three is that as far as I understand, the DRM core has no idea about which bridge is connected to which other bridge before uh, the DRM bridge attach yep. call. And to get, uh, but in this case, we, uh, I think we need some to, to, to find the previous and next bridge even before the attach function. So the core doesn't know about the connection between bridges natively. I mean, it doesn't know anything about device tree. Yeah. Um, so it, it's... But I was, what, oops, sorry if I didn't understand what you were trying to say, but we have some, the core itself doesn't know about basically how the bridges are described. That's true. But we do provide some helpers to, that are opt-in to drivers to use a device tree to know which bridge is next. Um, so I don't know, it's something like DRM OF get next bridge or whatever, which takes the device node, returns to your pointer. If we can make that return a reference, uh, a reference counted pointer, then it should, be, it should be fairly easy to roll out to pretty much every driver, I guess. Yeah, but still the um, the single bridge driver, uh, currently the single bridge driver know uh, which is the next or the previous because they know how their device tree is represented. Yeah. Like they know port one is the following or the previous, whatever. Uh, the core doesn't. Uh, so if like a, a bridge appears, uh, the core doesn't know to which other bridge it is connected, so it cannot inform the correct bridge. It has to like inform all the bridges, which is what we do now. Inform all the bridges, and then each bridge will go and see, is it my follower or not? And they all will fail except maybe one. So that is... So you mean when you apply a new valley? Yes, yes. But I... My understanding of valleys was, so if you want to add a new valley, you would add that OF graph port node, and so you would get notified, right? Because you added some new no node to the device. You so the new node, you probe a, a device, you probe the bridge, the yeah. bridge driver. But you have um, an event mechanism for overlays being applied to device in the kernel. Yeah. Then maybe we can just leverage that, right? The last bridge that has been probed will need to have a new port node to get that new bridge, and so we'll get an event from the kernel, so then we can notify the DRM core that there's a new bridge, no? Yeah, the notification to the DRM core that there is a new bridge is already there. I mean, on uh, DRM bridge add, the core knows, so yeah. that's fine. Uh, it still doesn't tell anything about the topology, but it tells the core there is a new bridge somewhere. Yeah. But then the core is unable to find to which other bridge this one is connected. It could parse device three, but it doesn't know whether, for example, port one is the second uh, sync port or the first source port or whatever. So yeah. it cannot find the previous bridge uh, reliably. Yeah, but it will be the driver itself, which will parse its own device tree. It knows that like port one is the uh, second sync port. And so it will use that to find its own previews and its own following bridge and then attach to that, so which happens very late. Yeah. So yeah. The, the, the core doesn't know up to that point. So it, there is no way the core can inform a bridge, A, your follower is arrived. It can inform all bridges, which is what we do now uh, in before. Uh, it can, can tell all bridges, there is a new bridge, please check, maybe it's your follower. It doesn't seem very great, but uh, it's what we have. So. First of all, as I said, when you're attaching the next bridge, it can look the previous bridge, and it, then it can actually say, yeah, there is, there is something going with you. So with the previous bridge... Did, 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 did you get you? Oh, if you can go back to the... Uh, 
Yes. So uh, what, when probing the SN65, yep. uh, you can find the previous breach and tell it the, uh, to the SIM that, yeah, something has happened. Yes, that's so basically what yeah, happens th That's one, one possible thing. And that might also simplify some other use cases uh, in, the, uh, in the USB C stack. And the other pointer or the other idea, maybe I will be thrown upon, is that currently, we, as you said, we build a chain of the bridges during the attached time. That's when we create the chain. But it, you might very well uh, think about moving, building the chain to the probe time because that also solves another issue. Uh, what, we, what we had uh, is that we, we create the bridge, it gets, re, uh, it gets uh, registered in the core, uh, uh, the previous bridge gets a notification, it, it, gets, oh, it gets probed, it finds uh, that next bridge pointer, it stores it, but then for a reason that next bridge goes away. It gets just removed from the system. So there were uh, resource leaks in, in our case, there were uh, accesses to the unregistered memory, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we solved that by making sure that the bridge is registered last when, there re when nothing can remove that device anymore. But maybe that's also a pointer that, or maybe it points that we should change the bridge chain creation. I mean, Okay, so thank you. Time is out. Uh, thank you for the discussion. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, we have the final slot of today is free, so we can have ad hoc discussions. So if you, if you want, we can continue this discussion there, okay? So now it's time for the break, and we have uh, half an hour. So we are back here at 5 o'clock, okay? Thank you.